What is up my friends? This is Danny with Plug and Play. Today we have a brand new tutorial for you all about how to make variable stroke widths inside of After Effects. Now traditionally it's impossible to control the width of a stroke as it moves along the path, but we have a really cool and simple workaround for that. It's a little bit of a long tutorial, so grab some popcorn, sit down, and enjoy. Once you're in After Effects, we're going to go ahead and drag our text layer inside of our composition here. Now I made mine in Illustrator, but feel free to use your own typeface and just type it in in your uh, composition here. So I'm going to scale our uh, text layer to be the appropriate size. I'm thinking maybe a little bit bigger than that. The main thing that I want to get across in this tutorial is how to do the variable stroke when um, we're doing this right on effect. This effect is going to rely on using an effect in After Effects called Echo. To start out, we're going to trace our layers using the pen tool. And we're going to want to trace the entire layer, the entire letter, I should say, until it stops. So for instance, this W, we're going to trace along this entire W and then we'll end the path here. Since these are all connected, we'll be able to draw one path along this entire group of, of characters here. And same thing for these ending characters. So let's go ahead and do that. Now once you reach the end of your character, you're going to want to click on that path or on that layer and that will end that path and then you can pull up your pen tool and start again. If you want to separate your Bezier handles on these uh, on these path curves here, you can just hold Option and click on one, and it, it will separate them. For this T here, I'm going to actually do this in two separate paths. I'm going to have the stick of this animate on first, and we'll go through the tail of that, and then we'll come back around and uh, go through this cross here. Okay, now that we have our path drawn over all these different text layers here, we're going to want to make a new shape layer. And we're going to want to make a rounded rectangle. Now, we can make this fairly small and make sure it has a, uh, a fill, but it doesn't matter what type of color that is. Another thing that we want to do is once we have that rectangle drawn, let's go ahead and center this anchor point. So I just hit Y and that brings up the pan behind tool. And while holding Command or uh, Control if you're on Windows, you can snap that uh, anchor point to the middle of this layer here. Great. Let's call up the path in this, uh, this path layer here. So to do that, I hit Command or Control F. I'm just going to search for path. I'm going to select this first path from the W. And I'm just going to uh, go through the W first, and then we can go through the rest of the animation here. But the W will get you a good idea of what exactly is going on and how to replicate it. So again, I'm going to select the path associated to the W. I'm going to hit uh, Command C. And then I'm going to call up the position of this new shape layer we drew here, and I'm going to hit Command V. Now what that is going to do is going to paste the path that we had drawn in the shape layer and it's going to um, make that a position movement. It's going to keyframe all these positions to align with the path that we uh, drew before. So as you can see, as we scrub through our timeline here, you can see the new shape layer that's moving along that path that we drew previously. I'm going to bring these to the beginning of our timeline. And another thing that we want to do is we're going to want to make sure that this rectangle orients itself properly when moving along this path. As you can see, it's just facing straight up right now, and we want it to be um, oriented to wherever this path is going. So to do that, we're going to want to search um, Auto Orient, and we can hit this uh, button here, and then we're going to want to toggle it to be Orient Along Path and we're going to want to rotate this actually 90 degrees and then as you can see wherever the object is moving the rotation is going to orient properly now let's uh, start by adding an effect called echo and i already searched it up here but we're going to want to add echo to this layer and what echo does is it basically replicates the same animation that you had uh, going on and it's going to just offset that in time a bunch of times. So for instance, it's set to one echo right now. We're going to crank that up to be about 500. 
and we're going to also set this offset time to be something a lot lower than the default and we can set that to be like 0 0.0063 now this is going to be pretty intensive on your computer it's going to use a lot of processing power because it has to go through and calculate exactly where um, all these different replications are going to be right so instead of just having one uh, shape layer moving along this path is essentially going to have 500 of the same ones uh, going along this path but just offset in time so if we offset that a bunch as you can see it starts to create this path here that looks like a normal uh, path with a, uh, with a stroke on it but the difference with this path is that when we go into the uh, the size of our shape layer and start keyframing the size of our shape layer we can control the thickness of this path so let's go ahead and we can click on this rectangle layer and I'm going to hit uh, command and control F and I'm going to search up the size of this guy and I'm going to keyframe that. The concept of this is that as we're moving along our path here we want to be able to control the thickness of this path right because there's all different types of thickness in this font and we want to make sure that we are moving along this path uh, appropriately so that we're not animating stuff on before it's supposed to be animated and uh, and all that good stuff so let's start by going to the beginning of our animation here and as you can see this path is uh, fairly consistent up into uh, the top of this W and like I said earlier this is going to be pretty intensive on your computer so I disabled the echo effect for the time being just because it takes up so much processing power and we can start at the beginning of this animation and we're going to start keyframing the size of the shape layer. So to start out with, we have a pretty big stroke to begin this font with. So I'm going to crank up the size of our uh, shape layer here. And as we're moving along the path, we get to this point where we have a little bit thinner of the path here. We can go ahead and drop that down to be something smaller. And then as we move along, we're moving along all is good we're going to get to this intersection point here where there is the bottom of this W and this sharp corner here now we want to make sure that we're not ever touching this portion of the W until it's time to animate that on so when we get to this point I'm going to turn down the size of our uh, shape layer here as we get closer I'm going to turn that down a little bit more and we can always go back and adjust the size of the shape layer and also the path associated to it. Okay, I have this weird, really big keyframe here I'm going to delete. Something to keep in mind is that it doesn't matter if our shape layer touches uh, portions of the font that have already been, um, been touched by, the, uh, by the, the stroke to begin with. So since we already animated this portion of the W on, it doesn't matter if we uh, are touching that when we go further along in our path animation here. Like as you can see right here, I'm touching um, a portion of this, this font that's already been um, covered with our shape layer, but it doesn't matter because it's already been touched by the shape layer. So we can continue along our path here. And here's another portion of the font that I want to talk about. When we get to this sharp corner where we're merging into another portion of the of the same character and we have this sharp corner here, we want to make sure that we're skimming this corner as lightly as we can, right? We want to make sure this looks like it's one stroke continuing from here all the way up here and then when we start coming down this, this middle portion of the W, that's when we can hit this portion of the font. So let me animate that on and I'll, I'll show you guys what I mean here in a second. So we're going to decrease the size a little bit of this guy. And as you can see, I'm doing my best not to touch this portion of the font yet. So maybe come down a little bit more. And this can be pretty tedious, but at the end of the day, it ends up being a great text right on script animation. So we get up to this um, thick portion of the font up here and we can now keyframe the size of this be uh, larger again. Okay, we're coming back down. All is good, we're touching over here, but remember we already animated that on, so it doesn't matter. 
and we're going to get to this thin portion of the stroke. So I'm going to set another keyframe and decrease the size of this a little bit. Now, depending on what type of machine you have, you can either leave on the echo effect the entire time or you can turn it off. I've been uh, doing on and off just to kind of see what my path is looking like and it takes a second to load. So that's why I've been keeping it off. Okay, so now you can start to see um, what our path is looking like. Um, as you can see, it's a variable stroke because we're starting out here with a really thick shape layer. And then we're moving along this path. Um, I just changed the echo operator to be maximum. Um, that's why I just changed colors. But I'm moving along this path and I'm animating the size of the shape layer so that it conforms to the thickness of the font. And as you can see, I miss a little bit here, but it's easy to always go back and we can always add a new point in our position path by uh, calling up the pen tool, hovering over that path and clicking on it. And uh, I can obviously adjust this a little bit so that we're not missing this, um, this part of the font right here. And this is where I like to turn off the echo effect. And we can adjust a little bit more on this W. Make sure we're hitting all of the font here. And then we get to the end of this animation right here. And I'm going to turn on the echo effect again. All right, so I've gone ahead and turned on the echo effect and RAM previewed what this W animation looks like. Um, you may be seeing or wondering what is going on with all this jiggling up here. And that's because it's just all those different echo effects um, rounding this corner here. Uh, but as long as we always have this text covered, it won't matter in the ending animation. So just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what is um, what this is going to look like in the final result, I'm going to move up this text layer, make sure it's right underneath our uh, write down effect or our uh, new sh variable stroke layer. I'm going to change the track mat of this font to be alpha mat. Okay, so now if I do a quick RAM preview of this, you can see how we're getting this really precise uh, write down effect where we can control the exact width so that we're not animating stuff on before it's supposed to be coming on. Now as you can see I missed a little bit here and we can always go back and adjust that. But you get the general principle of this. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this animation um, exactly like I did this with the different text layers that I have. And then I'll show you a little bit more pizzazz we can add on to the end. Okay so I've gone ahead and I've animated the rest of these uh, stroke animations here. As you can see, I have every single one of those original paths on its own layer with its own echo effect and its own uh, rectangle being animated. And as you can see, we have a pretty good control over the actual size of that stroke. Uh, one of the more, more intricate parts of this animation is this uh, little loop-de-loop -loop on the R here. And with a traditional uh, path and uh, trim paths animation, I would not be able to control nearly the amount of uh, finesse that I have to get into these little strokes here that are this uh, this loop-de-loop. -loop. So as you can see I keyframe the size of that uh, rectangle to go down uh, a fair amount right as we get close to this uh, first intersection here and it provides me with uh, a lot of control so that I'm really not getting anything animated on that I don't want animated on yet. So if I go a certain amount past our uh, animation here, you can start to see that the stroke is starting to disappear. And that's just because the uh, number of echoes that we had ran out. So if that's the case and you're not done with your animation yet, just go ahead and go inside of one of that layer that the echo is not lasting long enough. And in this instance, it would be this one. And I would crank that up to be something like 600. Just make sure you have enough so that once you get to this last keyframe, everything is uh, still on there. All the paths are still on there. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end all of these layers right at this last keyframe, and I'm going to pre-comp that. We can call this mat. Great. Now I'm going to set the track mat of our text layer here to be an alpha mat of that new uh, pre-comp with all our strokes in there. And now you can start to see our write down effect. And it's looking pretty good. There's a lot of um, intricate pieces of this font, especially when we get to the end of it with the R. And we hit it pretty well because we have the ability to go in and control the, the, uh, the thickness of the stroke as we move along our path. 
Now I missed a little bit, maybe like right here, but we can always go back and fix that. I'm just gonna leave it for now. If this were a client, I'd probably be a little bit more diligent. Okay, so now once we have uh, that pre-comped and we have the track mat set up, I'm going to go ahead and pre-comp this. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to move this top layer, this top duplicate over two frames. And this bottom layer, I'm going to add a fill to that. Okay, we'll add a fill here. And uh, let's make this something a little bit sexier, maybe like a nice blue. Yeah, that looks cool. The uh, bottom layer is going to animate on blue, and then we start getting the uh, black that comes on over on top of that. That just makes it look a little bit sexier. And to make sure that we don't have any um, of this weird stuff on the edges where there's like blue and black combining, I'm going to add an effect called uh, a simple choker. And what this is going to do is just basically going to um, cut down the size of this uh, of this pre-comp a little bit. It's going to trim in all the pixels a little bit so that what we're left with is uh, just black. One other thing that I like to do is that since we have these path animations going on, I'm going to go ahead and go into our project here. I'm going to duplicate this uh, mat here. I'm going to just take that and drag that into our um, timeline here and let's go into this. Okay, now that I'm inside of this pre-comp, let's go ahead and select all these layers and let's disable all the effects. So that will get rid of all the echo effects we have going on and it's just going to leave us with these original uh, shape layer rectangles going on. Let's go to the end of the keyframes of the first path and I'm going to keyframe the transparency. Let's move that keyframe 10 frames back and set it to be zero. And let's do the same thing with all these other layers. So I can just copy that transparency, go to the next path, go to the last keyframe, go 10 frames back, and paste it on there. And I'm going to do that with all of these guys. Great, let's go back to our composition. I'm going to add an effect called fill. And let's go ahead and make this like a, let's make it white. We can send this behind these two layers, our two pre-comp layers of the stroke going on. And we're going to move these two layers of so the text coming on up again two frames. So now we have the start of this animation happening with this uh, shape layer coming on. And then once it gets to the end of that path, it's going to fade out in transparency, as you can see. And then the next one is going to start, and that's just going to help lead this animation a little bit more. To sell it even a little bit further, we're going to go ahead and add a force motion blur to that layer. Great. Now let's add a background. I'm going to make this maybe a little bit darker blue. All right, let's go ahead and make another new layer. And we're going to add an effect called CC Snowfall to this layer. This is going to create a snowstorm effect on top of our layer here. And to do that, we're going to have to uncheck this composite with original box. And let's just pre-comp all these guys. One last thing to do to give a little bit of easing to this animation, we're going to hit Option, Command, or Control, MNT. And that is going to call up our time remapping. And now we can just select these keyframes and we're going to add a little bit of easing with motion. You can just right click on these normally and go to key from assistant and then time or a uh, easy ease if you want to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this very long tutorial. This has been the longest one that we have done yet. And I hope that you guys learned about how to utilize this variable stroke technique instead of After Effects. Using it to write on script text is only one of the many ways that it can be utilized. And if you do find a new way to utilize it, please share it with us. This has been Danny with Plug and Play.